Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I hope you're having a good weekend. If you're a little bored, hey, I've got something perfect for you. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you know I love my free and open source tools and that's exactly what we got today. Today we are talking about Tallow. So I'm assuming that's in reference to the Elder Scrolls, but who knows? Uh, this is a node-based open source VFX editor with a powerful interface and a ready-to-use libgdx runtime. Now, if you're unaware, libgdx is a Java-based framework. I'm a big fan of it. Did a long tutorial series when I first started this channel on YouTube. And if you want to check out libgdx, it's still relevant today, actually. So here you can see uh, open source node-based particle effect editor that can be used in game development. It's um, Since it's open source, Module Zoo is constantly growing. It's free to use, easy to integrate. Currently, they have a Java libgdx runtime. Uh, hopefully, more are coming soon. Of course, it's open source, so you can implement a runtime of your own. So that is the gist of it. I will, of course, share this link down below. Now, this project itself is actually open source. It is up on GitHub, and critically, it is under the Apache 2 open source license. The Apache 2 license is very liberal in what it allows you to do. Um, as you can see, it is very much actively under development, so it is definitely an interesting project to check out. If you want to go ahead and do the downloads, you're going to want to go to the releases and the zip file. Oh, sorry, the, the download file is down here. This is a jar file. Now, if you're not a Java person, you're going to need to install the Java runtime, the JVM, in order to run this, but otherwise just treat that just like you would any other ex executable. Um, and then once you got that up and running, it looks, oh, I'm running it. Okay. It looks a lot like this. All right, so we'll go ahead and run it. I thought it was already running. Sorry about that, folks. And here you go. So this is your main interface, and it is actually pretty polished. Now, the weird thing is this whole quadrant down here, it does nothing. I don't know why it's there. I would just do that by default. So maybe it's a future intentions kind of thing. Uh, but the interface is quite straightforward. We're going to come up here. We're going to go to examples, and I was going to do... Um, a fire example, and you can see the basics of how things work. So you get a preview of your particle effect over here. So you got this cool uh, burning fire kind of look going. We can have multiple emitters. You can add another emitter down here. You can move them up and down in the stack, but we'll look here at this guy. So left mouse button is panning around and then scroll wheel zooms in and out. As you can see, it does a pretty good job with that. Um, and it's, it's a node based thing. So you're building this particle over here. You've also got this emitter. It's sort of a standalone uh, functionality, but this is where the particles are actually uh, coming from like so and you can configure how the particles are um, done as if additive or not additive you can see it's going to fade over time um, and then you've got these neat controls so when you got this alpha over time kind of control we can change out the alpha by using these visual handle inputs and immediately see the results of our tinkering like so at the same time we've got this multi um, stage gradient in effect so if we wanted to we can oops I just turned it off. It's right click and let's make this have some blue in there to make it look really crap. So there you see, and you get immediate feedback of the changes you are making to your particle system. You've also got these neat controls. So example, we've got uh, rotation controls here. We can actually uh, use these little dials to control how the rotation works. Size controls, same time. If it's got multi-values, we can do this across this graph. We can add new plot points. It's got a really sweet and polished user interface. And so if you want to create particle systems, this is a great tool for doing it. And as you saw, it shipped with this one example, but we can also come up here. We can, we can look at the other one as well. I use this in the title graphic. Um, this is a beam example. And you're seeing the kind of work that it can do. Uh, we can change the size of this window, by the way. Again, I don't know why we have this this little section of dead space down on that. Now that I moved it aside, I don't know what this is for. Hopefully it's used for something in the future, but for the most part, the user interface is, it, it just works. It, it's solid. It, it, it works out nicely. Um, if you want to go ahead and create your own system, you can come on up here, do a file and then create a new project. You've got a blank slate. So you see here, nothing going on. I'm just going to right click over here and you'll see, or I can do it from up here in modules. Um, you can also create uh, groups things together so that you can kind of self documenting, but come up here, you go main modules. And then what you want is a particle. So this is your ultimate output. You're also going to want an emitter. So this is the, the number of particles being created. So you see not too much is going on. We need a particle to actually draw. So let's come down here. We'll go to rendering and we'll create a sprite renderer and we will connect that sprite up to the drawable aspect of our particle like so. And then you're seeing over here kind of where it's going. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a config. So we can also do a search. So config, emitter config. We'll drop that guy in and we can drop that and connect that into the config category of the emitter like so. And now we can say, okay, this guy is going to be 
eight seconds long and we're not going to be additive. So as time goes on, it's not going to continue and continue and continue. So here you can see now what I'm going to do is change out the velocity. So right here we have a velocity value right there. We can drop that out. Uh, static value velocity is a number, I think. So here we'll give it a velocity of two. And there you're starting to see our particles going off. We can uh, change the, the number of particles being admitted. Again, we can do additive versus not additive. Um, we've got a uh, color value over here. So let's come up here and we'll just add a color in. Like so, we could do a gradient like we showed earlier. I can just do a straight up color and we'll drop that into the color tag right here. Uh, we drop out a gravity. Let's put some gravity in the scene. I'm gonna assume it uses normal value. So we'll do a number. It's got a gravity of 9.8. So uh, that should start pulling things down. Maybe my velocity is too high. Let's do the velocity down to one. And gravity should start kicking in. We can throw in a random angle right now. So we could do here. Um, one of these values has, I don't want shape range. I want, uh, as you see, there are a number of different uh, settings you can do here, play around with. I'll just do this with just a number. And you see it automatically picked up the right thing. So now we can modify the angle of our system or we can just sit here and play around like an idiot, which is actually kind of fun. So you kind of get the idea of how you're composing your particles, uh, build all these systems together. You can get some more uh, impressive results than what I have done in this short period of time. Of course, we've also got values here for rotation, size, position, um, and so on and so forth. So we could randomize. So I could come down here. I could do a randomness like so. And do a random range between one and I don't know five. Oh, not linked. So one. Okay, not linked. Five and fifty-five. Fine. And I'll drop that into. I don't know size as a single. Actually, don't know. Whoa. Okay, let's do that a lot smaller. Two and one. So now our particles are all going to be of different sizes. Or let's make this one zero point two. We'll make this guy three. So you see you got uh, randomized size going on and just kind of that's the gist of it. Now, one of the really cool things that they've got going on, if you go back here, you'll notice there's actually got um, import legacy import functionality. Well, LibGX has its own built in particle example. Now, what I did is I went in and there's this particle pack that I grabbed um, and it's just a bunch of examples of LibGDX particle systems. So there's a ton of particles already being created for LibGX. This is just an example I downloaded. So what you can do is head on back over to Talos and we can go file. Uh, I don't know if I need to do an import a new or not, but we can come down here legacy and then do an import. And I drop that in my temp directory. So temp particle part, and you'll see there's a bunch of particles in there, a bunch of different examples under effects. So you see all these different categories, bloom, burn, dust, fire, so on. Uh, if you want to have something out here, so let's do this fireball. We'll open that up and you'll see, boom. So it's importing existing uh, particle effects. Now we should be able to see, so you see it's got two particles going on. For some reason I didn't actually, oh, there it is. It's just zoomed way over there. So you see it actually creates the particle system from LibGDX, but it gives it the new user interface you see here. So if you want to tweak around with values, you can totally do so with the new UI, but you can bring in those legacy particle systems from LibGDX. Let's do another import. So legacy import, Let's bring in this star, just totally random. So you can see the end result. Uh, the only downside, once again, is for some reason they're showing a way off scene, but it imports the particle effects system from LibGDX, but also again, gives you this uh, different UI for controlling and playing with things. So it's kind of, kind of cool actually. All, all of that existing LibGDF stuff that's out there, you can now just bring in and tweak here. So if you wanna go ahead and you know map, oh, there is a color. Let's go up here to the color, color. All right, so let's, oh, I don't want gradient. Ah, it doesn't matter. You wanna tweak around with the colors, you can do so. You wanna tweak around with the, the values, the life and so on. All of the settings from the original LibGDX particle system are imported and properly set up for you to use in the editor. Very, very cool stuff. Now, as you saw from the last example, it also had multiple particle systems that you can switch with. Sometimes particle effects are composed uh, between uh, using multiple emitters and you can do that in this system as well. And then you are, when you are happy with what you've got, you can basically uh, save it as a project or you can export it out. Um, and right now, again, the only player they have is that libgdx player. I think there are some um, code projects out there for loading libgdx particle systems into other um, uh, 
uh, formats and languages and so on. So uh, you could probably work on those code bases. Or this is one of those things that the community could definitely contribute to a project like this. So if you want to start bringing these kind of particle system effects into like Godot or uh, Unity or another game engine, um, it's an open source project. Again, it is under a very liberal license. This uh, Apache license is quite... Um, quite permissive in what it allows you to do. So integrating this into an open source project like uh, the Godot engine, no problem at all. Although you do kind of run into the challenge of it being um, you know, a different base programming language. Not a lot of people are using Java right now, so that's a catch. But nonetheless, it, there is a really cool tool at work here and there's a lot of flexibility and options you can do with it because it's open source and it is under a very liberal license. So hopefully at least a few of you guys found that interesting. Uh, it's definitely a sweet little tool. It's got a nice user interface. The usability is solid. And this legacy importing, this is actually really cool. This is probably one of the things that impresses me the most because this opens you up to a huge library of existing systems to start with and play with. So as you can see here, you've got your two systems. The only thing, again, that seems to be a bit of a bug is this, uh, they always come in imported from uh, off screen. Uh, but that, or so off, you got to pan to them, but that's a really small and minor gripe for a very cool and impressive tool. So you tweak that out, you um, add something to this little empty space down here, and you give this a couple more engine exports. And this is a tool I could see definitely going places. So if even if it's just something you want to play with for some time, it's actually a fun little tool just to jank around with on the weekend. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.